All right, guys, we are at Alphalete Gym today, about to hit glutes, but in today's video, yes, you're gonna get some workout tips, but I did wanna talk a little bit about the bikini division and what it's looking for. All right, so there is a new division called wellness, and so I think that kind of affects the bikini division in the sense of you can't get away with certain things like you used to be able to, quad size, for example. So you'll notice in today's video, we're gonna be hitting glutes and we will target quads and hamstrings a little bit, but I think a common misconception is that bikini competitors have big legs. But you have to remember, they're looking for proportions when you're posed, not when you're just standing relaxed straight up and down. So, um, I mean, some of you guys probably have noticed I don't have like the biggest legs. They're a little bit small compared to my upper body, but whenever I'm posed, they look a lot more symmetrical and proportional to, to my body. Um, so that is one thing to note is you don't want to do a ton of quad training unless you just don't have you know, quads at all. Um, so same thing with hamstrings. They don't want to see like crazy hamstring lines in the back. They're mostly looking for glute definition, but not so much hamstrings. And I think that's also a common misconception. And you see a lot of competitors like bending way forward in their back pose, trying to show those hamstrings off. That's not what they're looking for. And you will be deducted for that. Um, another thing is abs. So you want your abs to match the rest of your physique. And what I kind of describe the bikini division as is a Victoria's Secret model with muscles, right? So Victoria's Secret models, they have nice abs. You see the obliques, you see that middle line. You might even see some, you know, the actual blocks, but they're not gonna be like super dense, like CrossFit looking abs. And so with ab training, I do do some like hanging leg lifts, I'll do like V-ups and I'll do um, cable crunches, but you know, we, we wanna keep it limited and we only wanna keep abs, I don't know, you just wanna see them a little bit. So be careful with those. And then um, the last thing I would say is be careful with your traps too. You don't wanna see like big ass traps for the bikini division. Um, and the muscles that you do wanna really target are gonna be your shoulders, your lats, and your glutes. Those are gonna be like the three main bikini muscles. I do recommend training your entire body just so you don't develop muscular imbalances. And so everything kind of flows together, but you definitely wanna make those three muscle groups a focus. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started and I uh, hope you guys enjoy. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do for a glute workout is start out with activation. So this is my friend Ali's booty band. It's a really good one. Um, you can also just get some off of Amazon. So it's really, really important to activate your glutes before you go into a leg day, especially if you don't have that really good mind-muscle connection. So what this can kind of do, you wanna do lighter weight. I mean, this is a band, so it's like no weight, but you are getting some resistance. But we're basically gonna activate the muscles so that when we do go into something like squats or deadlifts or Romanian deadlifts, your glutes are actually gonna be fired up and working and engaging. So we're gonna do three exercises, three sets of 10 reps each. Um, the first one's gonna be a glute bridge, and then we're gonna also do donkey kicks and fire hydrants. They look pretty funny, but they work, so we're gonna do them. Donkey kick. And then the last one is fire hydrant. This is gonna get this side, this side booty right here. And it's called a fire hydrant because it's like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant. All right, so before we go in there, because the music's really loud, I'm gonna explain the workout. So we're gonna start out with two compound exercises. It's always better to do compounds before isolations. So compounds, like when you're, do, you're using multiple muscle groups, you're not just isolating one uh, muscle. So we're gonna start out with two compounds and then we're gonna follow that with a few isolations and then finish off with calves. We're gonna stick in that eight to 12 rep range. That is the best rep range for building muscle, AKA hypertrophy. So we'll stick a little bit lower, like eight to 10 for the compound movements. We're trying to build, get stronger. And then with the isolations, we'll probably go up towards 12. Um, other than that, we're gonna be adding in a little bit of booty work in between sets, just so we keep everything activated. 
And after that, we should be good to go. might have noticed that we didn't do a ton of volume today something that I've come to realize especially last year I made the most booty gains and shoulder gains when I took my training from like 10 to 12 exercises in a day down to like five and what that does is one promotes recovery you're not over over fatiguing your muscles breaking them down too much um, but also you're not pacing yourself throughout the workout you know, if you have, if you know you have to do 10 exercises, you're going to kind of take your time, like not go too hard on the first few exercises because you know you have a whole like hour and a half left to go. Whereas if you only do five exercises, you know that every single set, every single rep counts. So I find that that's the best thing for growth. Um, whether you're trying to bulk or cut, I think a little bit lower volume is, is definitely the better option. Hopefully you guys took some things away from this video. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.